Welcome to the Raw Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to be building an application which is going to consume cookie authentication and a JWT token authentication. So two authentication solutions combined. In addition, we'll take a look at how we can integrate identity framework into this. If you watch my videos, you understand how identity framework is just orchestration of database and authentication services. But if you don't watch my videos, you don't know that. So if you watch this video, you're going to learn a lot about identity framework. Don't forget if you're enjoying the video, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. And I've released my first C-sharp programming course. If you want to know C-sharp as I do it, I highly recommend you go ahead and check it out. Let's go ahead and get started. So we have quite a beefy example over here. I highly recommend you watch my cookie authentication and the JWT token authentication videos if you don't know anything about the topic. In Program CS, I have the key manager, which is a service that creates, spits out this RSA key and then loads it up if it exists. So that is the key file that you see over here. This key is used to sign the JWT token that we're creating at this endpoint. In order to have access to these libraries, you need the JWT bearer package. And please note for Entity Framework Core, I have the identity integration and I'm using the in-memory store. If we come back to the top over here, I'm registering the default identity DB context as my DB context and it is in memory. And then I have the bog standard set up for add identity. For add authentication, I'm just registering add JWT bearer authentication. I'm not registering any cookie authentication. Please note, cookie authentication is registered as part of add identity and the default authentication schema is going to be set to identity constants application schema, which is just identity dot application. So when I'm going to be referring to the cookie authentication schema of identity signing session, I will need to use this constant value over there. Going down, I register my authorization services and then I invoke build and setup. Build and setup, all it does is registers a user with a role of janitor. So, you know, no managers, no admins over here. We have a janitor. Closing down this, we then have the three endpoints, which are going to be the highlight of the video. We want to be able to sign in with a cookie authentication schema or a JWT token authentication schema and then be able to use either to access one route, be able to only use cookie to access one route and then only JWT token for the other route. Doing so will ensure that we can basically sign in any way that we want and orchestrate access any way that we want as well. Let's take the cookie sign in route, come back to the browser. The application is already running here. We're going to sign in with a cookie. I'm then gonna come back and refresh. And this is the cookie and this is what the claims look like for this user. So I'm printing them out right over here. If I try to use this to access a secret, I'm going to get an exception because the policy isn't registered yet. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to the builder. We're going to add a body and then add a policy with this name. And in the policy builder, we're going to specify that we require an authenticated user and we want to add authentication schemas, which are going to be identity constants and application schema, if you remember correctly. And we also want to say we want access with JWT on top of which we will require a claim of role and janitor. And that should be it. The application should restart. We'll come back over here. And now we're capable of reaching the secret route. When we're signing in with our cookie authentication schema, we're using identity framework in order to construct our claims principle and sign in with it. One of the biggest questions that may arise when we're trying to create our JWD token, which uses a claims identity in order to construct this token, how do we get this claims identity? Well, if you watch my videos, you know I like to decompile stuff and take a look at the source code. If we take a look at password sign in async, we grab the user, we then go further down. Eventually, if you follow the trail, you will end up on sign in or two factor async. And then you're going to end up in this method over, sorry, not over here, in this method over here. So sign in with claims async and this AMR PWD, this is essentially a password sign in claim. So if we come to the root over here, you will be able to see this claim over here. So this is potentially how you may want to identify that you have signed in with the cookie authentication schema. Okay, 
let's come back over here. If you have this claim, you're essentially authenticated with identity framework. So remember, a claims array is passed down as this parameter. So sign in with claims async, and then again, sign in with claims async. We still have the enumerable of claim over here. However, what is happening is a create user principle is being called over here. We have a user principle, which is a claims principle, which is going to contain identities. So a first identity is extracted and then the claim is added to it for each additional claim that has been supplied. And then the context, which is the HTTP context, sign in async is being called on it. If we take a look at what the create user principle async is, it's a claims factory, whatever this type over here is, and the create async method invoked on it. Let's go ahead, take a look at the claims factory. Looks like it's a property right over here, which gets assigned over here, which gets passed down in the constructor. If we come back to program CS and we go to where identity framework is being registered, and we scroll down where all of these services are being registered, we're gonna see that it is indeed a service which is registered, which we can also use. So if we come down to where we're provisioning our JWT token, let's go ahead and use this interface with identity user. This will be a claims principle factory. So let's go ahead and get our user. We're gonna await over here make the Lambda asynchronous and the parameter that it's asking us to pass down into create async is going to be type of T user. So the way that password assign in async actually gets the T user is through the user manager. So let's go ahead, grab it, place the user over here. We'll call this principal, find by name async. We can go ahead, grab this, place this over here. And again, if we go into the password manager and we want to use password sign in async, make sure we check the password. We can actually find this method on the sign in manager. So we can actually take the sign in manager again. Let's put a little bit of space here. So sign in manager, we'll, we'll then duplicate this and we'll add a user manager. First of all, take the sign in manager. We're going to check password sign in async. And before that, we're going to use the user manager to find the user. We take the user, supply the user, then supply the password, false flag for the lockout. And there is going to be a result over here. If the result is successful, etc., go ahead and proceed. I'm going to know that the result is successful because I'm basically scripting everything over here. So the check is over here. The fetch of the principal is over here. Token construction is over here. We take the principal and we extract the original identity. So the same way that the claim is being added inside an identity framework, although I don't think this is the most efficient way, we basically just grab the first one. And what we want to do is actually go ahead and place it maybe somewhere over here, take the identity, assign it to the subject, and over here say something along the lines of add claim, new claim, and what was the sign in type AMR. So AMR is still PWD because we're still signing in with a password. Although now the authentication schema, we can call this method will be JWT. This will be apparent from trying to load a token from over here using the JWT authentication schema. So as this is going to trigger its logic, we will basically know what authentication schema we are signed in with. So this claim is optional at this point. I'll remove the comment over here since we've figured out how to do this bit. I'm going to take JWT sign in async, come back to the browser. I will open a new tab. I'll place this over here. And here is our token. Now we actually want to be able to consume this token. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to some events. So JWT events, these are going to be new events. One of the very first uh, events is going to be on message received. And this is where I can intercept the token from the query parameter. So the Lambda looks something like this. We can now come back, take the token that we have over here. Well, we'll go to the root and now we will append a T parameter with the token. You can see that we are still authenticated with the cookie. However, we're going to clear the cookie and re-enter and the user is still empty. The reason the user is empty is even though we register the JWT authentication schema, nowhere in the ASP.NET Core logic does it specify that you actually want to load your authentication schema from there. 
the place where it's registered where you want to load your authentication schema from is on the add identity method call when it's adding the initial add authentication, which points to this cookie authentication over here. If we want to be able to load the user context from the token as well, what we will do is actually specify a default authentication schema. So on the builder default policy, and we're going to use a new authorization policy builder and we're going to build on the end and then we're going to move all the relevant stuff into the middle and uh, remove this malarkey over here with the default policy now set if we require authorization over here please note we will now not be able to reach this endpoint as an anonymous user however we will be able to load the authentication context from the jwt bearer token so if i come back over here we'll refresh and we see a little bit of an unexpected exception. Basically, I shouldn't have marked this as a success. And since I've actually encountered this mistake, let's actually take a look at the JWT bear handler. When we send the message a receive event, if we mark it as a success, we will return over here. Otherwise, we just try to lift the token from there. So by marketing it as a success, we returned early and we didn't go through the logic of actually trying to extract a claims principle from the token, which is actually what we want. So let's go ahead and close all of that. With that now fixed, let's give this another refresh. And now we have our JWT token. So we still sign in with password and method is JWT with some additional claims over here. Cold beans, can we reach secret? Yes, we can. Can we reach secret dash cookie? No, we can't because, well, cookie policy is not actually created. So this cookie policy right over here. If we go ahead and duplicate this, place it over here, name this cookie policy. We don't want to name this the policy and we don't want to use the policy over here. We remove JWT from here. We can still keep the role of janitor. This is just an illustration. And then if we add another policy, which will use the token policy, and instead of application scheme over here, we will use JWT. We now have three endpoints which are allowed for both policies, only cookie policy and then only token policy as well. Let's come back to the browser, give this a refresh until it crashes again. It attempts to redirect us, so I'm probably going to lose the token over here. Let's just double check that I can reach secret with the token. I can. We can then try to reach, what was it, secret dash token dash token and we can reach the token secret and if we try to reach a secret cookie we cannot if i grab the cookie sign in method try to sign in with a cookie a one too many forward slashes i now have a cookie in the browser let's try to go to secret we can let's try to go to secret cookie we can and if we try to go to secret token we cannot and that's pretty much it. Now you know how to create an ASP.NET Core application, which is authenticated with both cookies, tokens, using identity framework, and you're capable of reusing identity framework to create identities for both cookies and tokens, and then authenticate endpoints depending on which authentication schema somebody is using. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or come join me on my Discord server. If you want the source code for this video as well as my other videos, you need to come support me on Patreon. A very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.